Wait, remember Tron Evolution? It was the spin-off video game tie-in to the Tron film franchise that takes place between the original film and the newest one at the time, Tron Legacy. It acts as this prelude to Tron Legacy, giving us a look into the backstory of key important figures within the world of Tron, and giving context to where we find them all at in the 2010 movie. Today just feels like a good day to talk about Tron. So if you enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll fill you in on another secret Tron video for me that you can all watch after this one. Let's jump on a light cycle and look back at Tron Evolution. Free will, man. Try programming that. Tron in itself is heavily tied into gaming. To this day, I still think it's one of the coolest arcade cabinets. Kind of want friend of the channel Anthony God's Tron Arcade 1-Up cabinet, but that's neither here nor there. Regardless, Tron and video games go hand in hand, so it only makes sense that since a new Tron movie was hitting theaters in December of 2010, that a tie-in video game should also probably come out around the same time near the end of 2010. Sounds like a good idea to me. But as we'll get to later in this video, there may be a lot more to how important and expansive the video video game story side of things are to filling in a bunch of gaps and establishing upcoming plot points. We expect Tron Evolution to be a premier action-focused game that both stands on its own and supplements a major event film. Vice President and General Manager for Propaganda Games, Dan Tudge, stated. He went on to say, because Propaganda Games is based in Vancouver, which was the site of the film's principal photography, we were able to leverage the proximity to continuously collaborate with the filmmakers and ensue authenticity between the two projects. Which makes sense because with the film not being out yet, the creators of the game need to be aware of certain details in the movie that they can and can't alter or affect from this sort of prelude and having access to the people making the film that helps steer and influence design choices, gameplay choices, as well as gives a direct line of questioning to make sure that the lore is fully intact. Tron Legacy producer Sean Bailey adds on to this by saying, the collaboration between the video game development studio and the film creators is exceptional. From the ongoing discussions between the filmmakers and the game developers, Tron Evolution should enhance and expand the mythology and the world of Tron Legacy. There was a lot of faith in the Tron property to be the next big hit for Disney, so when it came to things like the tie-in video games or other related spin-offs, they tried to keep a certain level of authenticity from the movies, specifically the actors integral to these additional counterparts. While Jeff Bridges had Fred Tattashier jump in to handle covering his voice, both Olivia Wilde and Bruce Bob Fox Litnier, tend to make sure that they reprise their voices across the board, with Tron Evolution being no exception. Disney wanted the game to make as much of a stylish splash as the movie was. Heck, at E3 earlier in that year, yes, the same E3 as, well, this. Hi. They brought a life-size replica of a light cycle from the movie as an attraction to get your attention on the show floor. This is a lot of extra effort to push what most would have assumed to be just a standard tie-in video game. So with all of the money backing it, all of the promotional efforts, how did the game turn out? Sabotage is not polite. After what you did, I wasn't worried about manners. Our world is in danger. We need a savior. Start the evolution. Tron Evolution is basically the setup to explain the entrance of new characters like Korra in the movie, as well as how Kevin Flynn, the creator of Tron, the grid and everything, is in prison there and hasn't been able to return to the real world outside of the grid. The reason why his son gets left with no dad and becomes all moody when he becomes an adult. But we also start the game learning about ISOs, which are programs that were not programmed to exist within the world, but instead were mysteriously self-created by the world, which leads to the existential themes about what does it truly mean to be born, have free will, and more. We also learn about the newest version of Clue, the program created to be like Kevin and help oversee the nurturing of this world. But we learn that Clue's views of overseeing this leads into his vision of the perfect world to exclude these ISOs, especially after an incident at a ceremony that draws the line between Kevin and Clue, as well as introduces Korra, the main ISO we meet later in Tron Legacy. The result of this altercation at the ceremony sees Tron telling Flynn to get 
get out of the grid, but what seems like a murder, or sorry, a derezzing of both Kevin and Tron, your character Anon must work with Korra as we make our way through various levels as a plot from Clue to rid the grid of ISOs unfolds, as well as see the growth of a deadly viral program and the truth about Kevin's death being greatly misreported. By the end of your journey, the game really, no pun intended, clues us in to what led to Tron Legacy. While not every little bit of detail is given for every little thing, we learn so much more about the ISOs, Clue's ambitions with controlling his perfect vision of the grid, Korra's relationship to Kevin in great detail, me calling him Kevin when I should probably just be saying Flynn, but I think it's funnier that way, and of course the fate of what happens to the main character you play as in the game, Anon. The story becomes a perfect build-up for where we find the film at in 2010, where we enter a dictator-led world by Clue's comfortability and not worrying too heavily of detractors or those who oppose him. There are still plenty of tales to be told between the time the game ends and the movie starts that aren't answered. It's a cool way of seeing the downfall of the grid and Kevin's initial vision and intentions being out of his control and learning how Clue truly came to power over the grid. It leaves you at a dark moment in the world, but it helped bridges that hopeful will to fight back in Legacy. Part Prince of Persia, part Batman Arkham Asylum is how I would describe it when it comes down to the overall base gameplay of the game as you parkour and traverse through all of these levels and fight back hand to hand or hand to disc sometimes, but it was all blended to familiar styles of gameplay that work really well. While in comparison to its influences with that, they are both done in a way more basic and less flashy fashion that unfortunately borders on the repetitive tedious feeling as you mindlessly mash the same buttons to easily beat up the same group of bad guys or just making sure that you're jumping in the right directions while you're running around. Now, simplicity is not an awful thing, less memorable and lackluster, for sure, but it's okay enough to still keep you engaged throughout the beautifully neon-lit world of the grid, especially those nice and shiny reflective floors. Oh, baby, the janitor's cooking. But while I love Tron for the neon look it has, there is definitely a difference between spending two hours with it in a movie and playing through the same environments with very minimal scenery or at bare minimum neon-colored light changes for seven to ten hours. Of course, however, there is the fact that you have missions where you get to drive the light cycle. They're cool. Nothing mind-blowing, but this is all I ever asked from this game. So let me take a moment to celebrate this win. Uh, but not this. This tank is clunky and slow and not the light cycle, and for that, I'm out. Well, not really out. Listen, the game at the end of the day doesn't present anything too special from the gameplay. The fighting and parkour are basic versions of other better refined versions seen better in other games. The vehicle handling and combat is fine at its best and tank at its worst. Aside from the lore here, answering some questions that we don't know the backstory to in the movie, and expanding the world of the grid as we know it, the game just becomes very okay. I hate to say the word bland, but instead of having the gameplay fleshed out, it just felt like there were cuts made to make sure the game came out on time for the movie. There is, or was, an online multiplayer set of games to play with up to 10 people. It was pretty cool, just offering the feeling of the games from the Tron world for people to play together. It never was anything too special, but there was some charm and fun to it all. But it's not like there was always an abundance of people online even at its peak to play with. The base game here has the DNA of something great, and given more time, I would have loved to see what a version of this game with a lot more development time could have been. Because it's not bad, it's just playable. A very okay time that my only takeaways will be from the story when looking back on it. The team working on the game were very passionate fans of Tron, and were working alongside the filmmakers to build this new updated version of Tron at the same time with no previous context. The movie and the game world were being developed alongside each other. I don't fault the team for not being able to fully flesh things out pre-Tron Legacy, but I can only imagine if it came out after, had more time to understand this world after the core of it was set. Heck, Disney had no problem making a tie-in prequel to Tron Legacy post-Tron Legacy, which we will get to later. But with all of that said, how did the game fare against the critics? How were the sales numbers? What happened to this game when it officially released here in the States on December 7th, 2010? I think it's time to have some fun in there. Get loose, you know what I mean? Get loose? Challenge the system. Now, the game didn't end up reviewing all that well, hovering around a 5 or 6 out of 10 by most outlets. Or, just like for reviews of the movie, we're thirsting over Olivia Wilde. That hot chick from House does all her own voice work. If only she looked even half as hot as she does in real life. Well, 
All right then. Now, movie tie-in games are something we don't see much more of today, but when they were so prevalent during the 2000s and part of the 2010s, it was expected that most would range from bad to mediocre, and the odd one out being a surprise and turning out great. We're all looking at you, Toy Story 3. Now, for what it's worth, the game did have a lot of redeeming qualities that make it a breezy and fun playthrough. But understand, with this releasing at full price at the time, it definitely is a hard ask for a lot of people for the content of what's inside of the game at full price, along with the general perception from reviews pushing gamers to not seek it out. And again, at least not at full price. Which led to the game having these major price cuts not long after the official release. Heck, that's how I got the collector's edition back in the day. I was in school at the time, dropping money on a full price game was a hard choice with very limited funds. But with my love of Tron itself and the hype of the movie, 30 bucks and I get the game and this cool light up light cycle? Yeah, I feel more justified in that. <laughs> It, it doesn't work anymore. The, the, battery, the battery's dead. It's okay. This one works. There we go. But nevertheless, Tron Evolution would go on to sell slightly less than 200,000 copies across North America and a decent bit under half a million copies globally. It unfortunately was a financial flop, which led to the studio Propaganda Games, who had previously made the 2008 version of Turok, with both a sequel to that Turok game on the way and another Disney-related game, this time for Pirates of the Caribbean, to be shut down by Disney in January of 2011 and leaving its future projects officially canceled. It's a fairly sad ending that somewhat mirrors the fate of the movie. Both were not financially successful for the studio, and aside from having their own fan bases, Tron in general was just quietly brushed aside from the limelight. Minus one other thing, but before I tell you that, there technically was another Tron game that came out at the same time. Or multiple, I guess. This time these were for the Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo DS. There was a different Tron game for you to play instead of Tron Evolution here. This time, Tron Evolution Battle Grids. Developed by a different studio, N Space, Battle Grids for the DS and the Wii are actually separated in the Tron timeline. The original Tron movie is set in 1982. The first game in order next would be Battle Grids for the DS, set in 1985. The DS game has you play as a security program that is focused on looking into a mysterious plot that involves corrupt programs on the grid. From there, we jump into the next Battle Grids game, the Wii version. And if you're cool, the Championship Edition exclusive to Toys R Us. This game, now set in 1998, focuses on the Grids games, where your goal is to compete in them and become the champion. It makes sense to focus on this for a full game if you're going to release it anywhere. Motion controls on the Wii are sure a fun idea for it. Okay, so now we're going to jump to Tron Evolution. No. Not that one, this one. Yup, the Sony PSP version of Tron Evolution is also completely different and is next in the timeline before the next Evolution game. Remember, all of these games were basically dropped into the public at the same time. That's a lot of lore to figure out the order. Four separate stories that all world build just two weeks before the movie would come out in theaters? That sounds lovely. Tron Evolution for the PSP is basically just more grid games. Then we don't get to the other games yet because this is now where the Marvel published graphic novel Tron Betrayal comes in. But I will no longer betray you because now, after that, set between 1990 and 2000, Tron Evolution finally comes into play. And yeah, all of those games play heavily into the lore building of the world that connect the dots between the major motion pictures. Kind of a lot more to these Tron games than you would assume on surface level. There is another thing though that happens that I didn't mention. So just as a bonus, only for you, so don't tell anybody. I just did a full big video looking into the underappreciated and short-lived show Tron Uprising, which is set between Tron Evolution and Tron Legacy. So if you want even more Tron, look out for the video on my other channel, Jordan Fringe, later the same day that this video comes out. Once it is out, you'll see a link down below and in the end card. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on Tron Evolution or even Battle Grids in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.